Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Smeal College of Business Accepted Student Program virtually here on Zoom. We know a lot of you are coming from the virtual admission session and tour, so we will give it another minute or two to let everyone trickle in. Welcome, everyone. Congratulations on your offer of admission. Still see some people coming in. So again, we will give it another minute or two and then we will get started. You know you all have a busy day for this program. Okay, well, it is 4.01. It has slowed down with people entering the Zoom room. So once again, welcome. Oh, well, there's a question already. We will get to that shortly. Very eager, that's very exciting. So my name is Julie Cutler. I'm one of the academic advisors in the College of Business. I'm joined here by Evan Smith, who will be presenting to you today. And we also have another advisor, Maureen DeSorcy, in the background uh, to be answering your questions. So again, welcome and congratulations on your acceptance to Penn State and the Smeal College of Business. A couple of quick notes. Um, we think this presentation is going to answer a lot of questions you might have about SMEAL, our entrance to major process, our extracurricular opportunities, and all of that good stuff. But if you do have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A as our preference, but you can also use the chat. There will be time for questions at the end, and then after this presentation at 445, we will have a panel discussion with some students, one of our representatives from our International Programs Office, as well as a faculty member from our Supply Chain and Information Systems Department. So with that, again, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to pop them into the chat or Q&A, and I will turn it over to Evan to get us started. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Evan Smith. I'm an academic advisor, along with uh, Julia Claire Cutler and uh, Maureen DeSorcy here. We're excited to give you some information about the Smeal College of Business. So I know that some of you are uh, looking here upon the, uh, the deadline of deciding colleges just in a few days. Uh, maybe some of the underclassmen here are just looking to get some information uh, for the next upcoming time when it's your turn to decide. Either way, uh, we're going to go over a couple slides here. As Julia said, uh, we're happy to take any questions in the Q&A or in the chat. There's a good chance that a lot of your questions will be answered as we go. Um, so I'm going to try to go through the presentation as it is. Um, we will save time for Q&A at the end. I always tell everyone in a presentation like this, I'm not leaving until all your questions are answered. So believe me, we'll make sure we save some time uh, for Q&A towards the end. With that, hopefully you can uh, see, hopefully you can hear me first off. So if you see my lips moving and you can't hear me, please let me know in the chat. Hopefully you can also see my shared screen here. Uh, it should say, welcome to the Smeal College of Business. If you can't see that, also let us know in the chat. Hearing none of those start though, I'm gonna get started. So welcome to the Smeal College of Business. Let's get started here today. Brief agenda about what we're gonna go over. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about our curriculum, some of the majors and minors that we have. We're gonna spend a good bulk of the time on that second bullet point, entrance to major process. That's a big one. And it's one we'll definitely dive into. Then we'll talk about some of the other uh, opportunities at Penn State, which includes studying abroad, different uh, career information uh, from his career center. We'll talk a little about the, uh, the, the opportunities and resources that exist along with some extracurricular time as well. So let's dig into it. 
here are the SMEAL majors, all right? Now, many of you probably heard of, of quite a few of these, so I'm not gonna go over each one, one at a time. Obviously, if there's individual questions, we can go over those, but most people have the basic idea of you know, something like accounting or finance, but let's look at some of the majors that maybe you're not quite as familiar with. The second one down, actuarial science. This is our most mathematical major. In fact, it actually has an extra uh, math entrance to major course. We'll talk about those in a second, don't worry. Um, but you gotta really like math to wanna do this major. Um, when I say really like math, I mean really, really like math, uh, but it's a great major. The next one down is corporate innovation and entrepreneurship. A lot of people know the word entrepreneurship, right? Starting your own business. And if you're interested in that, this is a great major. But let's focus on that first part, that corporate innovation part, because it's, it's both, you know, both of those parts and components of the major. Corporate innovation is going to teach you ways to look at things within a business in a corporate innovative strategy. So what that means is, you know, you might have a marketing job with this degree, but you're going to have these different innovative strategies that you learned in the classroom that you're going to bring to that job and that experience that maybe just a traditional marketing major wouldn't have for that job. Right. So that's this definitely it's a more most creative major we have. Uh, it's also the newest major. So that's something uh, we definitely, uh, you know, look into uh, three down from that is management information systems or we refer to it as MIS. Uh, if people don't know what this is. I, I try to free use the phrase data analytics. So I don't know data analytics is heavy Excel. It's going to be data analysis and processing and, and using that data to make business decisions. It often pairs uh, really closely with supply chain. So a lot of these decisions are going to be logistic based. Um, we'll get to that one in a second, but that's what management information systems are. We have two risk management options, enterprise risk management and real estate. Enterprise risk management is managing the risk within, within a company, right? Within, within one business uh, or enterprise, obviously, is where the name comes from. The second one, real estate, is really managing uh, the risk when it comes to um, acquiring uh, and running a different um, properties, things like that. So I always like to go over that. The real estate is not really a real estate agent. That'd be more the marketing major. Uh, this is always about the, the risk management and assessment. And the last one, some people are more familiar with this phrase than they used to be, but supply chain information systems. Uh, think logistics, right? So if you don't know what that is, what I try to say is there's a reason why Walmart and Amazon's prices are lower than everyone else's. It's because they have the best supply chains. They get products, goods, and services, moving them around the country cheaper than anyone. That's why their prices are lower. So that's supply chain major one. Again, one of our highly ranked majors. We also have four minors. The first one's international business, which requires students study abroad. We'll talk about that a little bit later in another slide. Supply chain information sciences and technology combines, combines some of our supply chain courses and some IST courses, information sciences and technology from their college. So it's kind of a combination of the two. Legal environment of business, definitely very popular if you're considering law school one day. Um, very, and, and, you know, obviously the extra legal expertise will be great for any business job. And then information systems management are some of our management information systems courses uh, put into a minor. At SMEAL, you don't need a minor. It's not required by any stretch of the imagination. And if you want one, you don't need to get one of our minors. Uh, there's probably 260, 270 minors across the university. You can get any one you want. All right. Now, some will definitely fit better with the SMEAL curriculum than others. Uh, so there's some minors, though, obviously the SMEAL minors, they fit in nicely. It's not going to be a ton of extra credits. There are some minors uh, that, that might be of interest and you want to go get that, and that's great, but it might be a little bit harder to get into, right? So that's why we like to kind of phrase those and give you those options. What we try to tell students as an, as an academic advisor, which Julia, Maureen, and I are, right? We like when students come in and they say, I might be interested in this minor. How, you know, how would that fit into my schedule? And we can look at it. Sometimes a student will say, yes, let's pursue that. That sounds great. And they may say, you know, that looks like a little bit too much. I'm not going to do that. That's fine too. The more information you give us as advisors, the better we can help you. And we'll, we'll talk about advising a little bit as well. But I like to point out a minor, again, not required for the university or, or for SMEAL, um, but it is an option. Uh, so yeah, Jade, like your question, can you minor other things like psychology? Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely can. Um, just certain minors will be a little bit easier uh, than others. Let's talk about the SMEAL curriculum, all right? So one of the things I try to do is, is highlight the differences maybe between Penn State and some of the other, you know, maybe business colleges or things like that that you're looking at, right? So I like to try to, you know, highlight those differences, both good and bad, all right? So what we're looking at is, uh, these are the different components of our curriculum. So the first one's a business seminar. Um, th this is a first year course. You take it in your first or second year semester. Uh, Julia and I have taught these in the past. Uh, it's designed to kind of get your feet wet within the university. All right, you're gonna learn different policies and procedures and, and different things that are important to the Smeal College of Business, like our honor and integrity, right? Different things like that. It's not a hard course, but it's a great way to kind of get immersed into the Smeal College of Business culture right from the beginning. 
The foundation courses are entrance to major courses. We're going to talk about those in a little bit. I'm going to get you a whole slide on those. So I'm going to skip past those for now. We do have a cultural development component. So what this means is every student in SMEAL, regardless of what they major in, has to take an international cultures course. A lot of our majors will actually have an international uh, course embedded within the major. Not all, but some do. We obviously understand business international, right? We, we know that. Uh, so that's an important component. There's also a language requirement, which again, we'll get to in a little bit. I know that's everyone's favorite slide. We'll get to that in a little bit. Major courses are pretty self-explanatory, right? You're going to major in something, right? That's obviously the goal. You're going to take courses in that major, right? So that one's not that surprising. This other business courses, though, is actually, to me, more important. So when you leave and graduate from the Smeal College of Business, you're going to be an expert in your, in your major field, right? No doubt about that. But you're also going to have experienced a lot of other business areas. So every Smeal student, no matter what, is going to take a course in management, marketing, accounting, finance, management information systems, supply chain, ethics, sustainability, business law, economics, business calculus, business statistics. Regardless of what major you're in, you're going to take a course in all of those areas. So what I try to tell students is when you leave SMEAL, yeah, you're an expert in your major, and that's true, but you're an expert in business. You're a well-rounded business student because you have to take these courses in all these areas. So you know when you're graduating and you're applying for jobs, let's say you're a finance major, right? don't just apply for finance jobs, you're selling yourself short. You've taken courses in all these areas, right? There's a lot of different jobs you can do. You will graduate here a business student first and foremost. And I think that's really important. No greater example of that is then our, our last bullet point here. This analyzing business and industry is a senior capstone course. You'll take your senior year. All the majors come together and take it. You're split up into teams and you simulate running a company. So each week you meet, you bring your knowledge from your major, your group will make your business decisions and put them into the computer program. You'll come back the next week and see how your company did, obviously make adjustments, and then that's what the entire class is. So it's a really fun way to, A, kind of, you know, wrap up your business career, but also you're going to be simulating running a company. It's pretty cool. So that's a really fun way. So again, you're going to be a well-rounded business student when you're done here. All right, now let's talk entrance to major. This is a big one. This is very important. So I want to make sure everyone's kind of on the same page. So when you apply, many of you have already been accepted at the Smeal College of Business. Thumbs up. You can't see it. There it is. That's awesome. We're very happy for you, but you still have to get into your major. So this is definitely something that could be different than some of the other colleges you're looking at. So I think this is very important to go over. When we say we have an entrance to major process, what that means is that there's certain components and certain things that you need to complete in order to get into your major. So what those are, and you don't need to be experts on these now, but I like to kind of lay this out so you know what we're talking about when we say entrance to major. There's eight or nine entrance to major courses you have to take. We're going to go over those. There's a minimum GPA that you need. Each major is a little bit different. We're going to go over those. And there's a credit window. The credit window is essentially when you're applying for your major. It's usually between your third and fourth semester. All right. So roughly you want to have the GPA that's required for your major after your third and fourth semester. Okay. Let's go into some of this a little bit further. Okay. Here are the eight or nine entrance to major courses. Now, some of these were courses that you may have heard me mention already, right? We talked those foundational courses. So as you see here, the, there's, there's English. Every student at Penn State's got to take that one. The rest are very all business related. Business, that's the calculus is business calculus. Then you have microeconomics, business statistics, and then management, accounting, marketing, and finance. So a couple of things about these eight courses. Usually, and, and this is roughly, students will take English, math, and econ their first semester, statistics and management their second, marketing and accounting their third, and finance their fourth, all right? The top four courses, so the English, the math, the economics, and the statistics, those can be transferred in. So when I say be transferred in, I mean you can take them at a community college, as long as the direct equivalent, dual enrollment if your high school offers that, AP exam, IB, any of those types of things. The bottom four, management, accounting, marketing, and finance, must be taken to the Penn State campus. You cannot transfer them in, okay? So uh, make that clear right now. So you can find direct equivalents to some of those courses at community colleges. Please don't take them, all right? Because you're going to have to take them again here. So please don't do that, right? Top four can be transferred in. The bottom four must be taken to the Penn State campus. A few other things of note. All of our SMEAL majors require Math 110, except actuarial science. I told you actuarial science is a big on math. So that's the only major you have to take math 140 instead of math 110. That is a calculus with some analytical trigonometry. Actuarial science actually is a ninth entrance to major course called math 141, okay? So when we say the eight entrance to major courses, it's eight for every major except actuarial science. Actuarial science actually is nine. Uh, and then you're gonna take a whole lot more math courses as well. So again, you gotta really like math if you wanna do actuarial science. But that's one thing of note. The other thing of note with this slide that's, that's kind of important is you actually need to see her better in all of these courses, except Econ 102. You can get a D in Econ 102 and still get into a SMEAL major. I'm not gonna recommend that though, 
and here's why. We have a GPA requirement for all of our majors, right? So this is every single major that was on that slide that we talked about earlier. You see our GPAs range from a 3.1 to a 3.5. Now, let's talk about how GPA works at Penn State, because I know every high school in the world is a little bit different, so let's make sure we're kind of all on the same page. A B at Penn State is a 3, and A is a 4, right? So that's pretty standard. A B plus is a 3.33, and A minus is a 3.67, right? And obviously you can go down further than that, but we don't want to go lower than a B. So what that means is if you have a B plus average, that'd be a 3.33, you can get into any major in SMEAL except finance. If you have an A minus average, that's a 3.67, you can get into any major in SMEAL. Now, B pluses and A minuses are probably a little bit harder to get in college than they were in high school. That's okay. There's a reason you were accepted or you're considering applying because Penn State knows that you can do this, right? But this isn't easy. Right, it's that's definitely not designed to be easy. This GPA ensures that you can meet the uh, the academic rigor that's going to come with your upper level major courses. Now, the reason some of these are different doesn't mean one major is necessarily better than another. It doesn't mean one major is higher paying or anything like that. These numbers are solely derived on supply and demand. All right. Um, so right now, finance is the most popular major. That's why it's the highest. Again, it's not the hardest. It's not the best. It doesn't mean anything like that. It's solely based on supply and demand. So again, they range from a 3.1 to a 3.5. So what that means is, you know, you need to be around somewhere above a B average to get in every SMEAL major, right? You're going to have to work hard to do this. The good news is that we tell you this ahead of time, right? This is some sort of secret or trick that you don't know, right? You need this cumulative GPA in order to get in your major. Cumulative GPA factors in the GPA for all the courses you've taken for a letter grade at Penn State. So it's not just the entrance to major courses on the previous slide. It's all the courses that you take at Penn State. All right. And that's how we calculate this, this cumulative GPA. So again, I said you can get a D in Econ 102. You can, but that's really going to hurt your cumulative GPA, right? We need to make sure we keep that GPA up at the top to make sure you can enter your major. But this is a very important slide. There are students that will say, you know, listen, I, I, I have to be a, a, you know, a supply chain major. I, I can't risk not being it. There's no guarantees here in the Smeal College of Business. Just because you're accepted into Smeal doesn't guarantee you a major. Now, if you do the things that we just talked about, if you take the, uh, the eight, and eight or nine entrance to major courses, you achieve the GPA on this slide, and you make sure that you apply during the credit window, you're in great shape. You will get in your major. So that's the way I like to look at how Smeal does it, right? Yeah, you're not going to be guaranteed a major, but if you do these things, you're in. Doesn't matter how many other people do it. So we don't take the top 10%. We don't take you know the top 100 people for each major. No. If you take the courses, you achieve the GPA and you apply in the credit window, you're guaranteed a spot in your major. All right. And that was pretty cool. So again, I don't expect people here today to memorize these GPAs and memorize the courses. That's why Julia, Maureen, and I have jobs, right? That's exactly why we do this. As academic advisors, we're here to help you. And we're going to go over this stuff. Believe me, you're going to hear a lot about entrance to major. All right. But I want you to know that this is a process the Smeal College of Business has. And I want you to know that is to help with the decision making process. So, you know, this is this is how Smeal decides who gets into their majors. Let's make it happen. Julia brought up a great point in the chat. So, yes, you had to put a major when you applied to Penn State, right? That means if you're accepted into SMEAL, you're moved into what we call pre-major status, and you're trying to earn admittance to one of these majors, whichever one you want, all right? This is a big differentiator between other colleges, so I want to make sure we, we spend the time for entrance to major that we need. I'll obviously answer any questions at the end, but for now, let's move on. This is a great slide. I love this one, and excuse me, I clicked too fast here. What this shows you is basically the different uh, Sample schedule, essentially, for your first year. When I started at Penn State, uh, it was quite a few years ago. We won't talk about how long ago. I had a very similar fall freshman year schedule because I was a SMEAL student. The only difference was I didn't take Spanish. I took German. So the first thing students always see when they show them this slide is, oh, my gosh, that's it? That's all the time I'm in the classroom? That's awesome, right? We love that. That's fantastic. You're going to be in the classroom a lot less than you were in high school. That's absolutely true. The flip side of that is you're going to be spending a lot more time doing work outside the classroom, right? That's how it works in college. So yeah, you're not in the classroom as much. And you can see here, you have English 15, Math 110, Econ 102. Those are three of the eight entrance to major courses we talked about. We said there was going to be a language requirement there so that a student was taking Spanish too. And that PSU 6 course you see on Monday is the first year seminar I talked about that Julie and I teach. Um, so this is a very typical schedule. Again, you will be having to do a lot more work outside the classroom. But hey, it's always nice not to be required to be in the classroom that much. Now, uh, you've definitely heard me allude to the fact that Julia, Maureen, and I are academic advisors. So what does that mean as an academic advisor? Well, when you start as a freshman in the Smeal College of Business, you're assigned an academic advisor. Could be Julia, Maureen, or myself. Obviously, we have a bunch of others. How Smeal does academic advising is that as long as you get in your major, we don't switch off once you get into your major. We don't only advise individual majors. We all advise everyone. 
All right. So when you start as a freshman and you graduate SMIL as a senior, you're going to have that same academic advisor, which is great, right? We get to know each other. It helps creating plans. There's more continuity throughout your four or four, you know, however long you're going to be in the, in the program. So that's a really nice way that we do things. Um, I really like that model. It gets, helps get to know you, right? We can have a little more fun. Once you get in your major, again, usually a junior year, uh, you have a faculty mentor. So what that means is that you're going to be assigned a professor from the area that you're majoring in. This is another resource. Again, you can schedule meetings with them, but they're going to help you more, not necessarily with class scheduling like Julia Maureen and I would do, but more career advice or internship advice, right? Or learning more about the individual sex within your major, right? So that's kind of what the faculty mentor does. Another resource is that every incoming Smeal College of Business freshman is assigned a sophomore, junior, or senior, Smeal student mentor. Here is another person that you can reach out to. You know, maybe you want to ask what questions that are more student centric, right? You, have a, you know, another resource, you can ask them. So again, you're hearing continually about these resources that Penn State and the Smeal College of Business has. The key here, though, is like, unlike in high school, right? Julia Maureen and I can't put you in courses. We can't take you out of courses, right? You need to initiate this. And that's the biggest difference in the shift between high school and college that now you're responsible for this stuff. We're always ready to meet. We're always answering email. We have appointments, virtual and online. We're here to help you, right? But you have to initiate that. That's the biggest difference now, right? I can't make you schedule a course. I can tell you what course I want you to schedule, but you have to actually schedule that, all right? So that's definitely a big difference from, from high school to college, but that's normal. That's part of the process. Some of the other cool resources that we have, and listen, we could spend a lot of time on this slide. I will try to keep it relatively quick. Um, listen, our faculty is second to none. There's no doubt about that. I like to highlight uh, the Saxby's Cafe. This is actually a student-run cafe in our building. When I say student run, what do I mean? I mean, there's a student, this, they apply for this, right? It's very competitive. And when you're accepted, you actually take a semester off from taking classes and your job that semester is running this cafe. You are the CEO. It's awesome, right? So there's different coffees. They actually have a, you can actually buy a Saxby's cup and uh, like a water bottle and have it refilled there each time. It's an awesome opportunity. So we really, really love the students take advantage of it, but there actually is a student CEO who will run it each time. We have the Business Career Center. Um, this is our own Smeal College of Business internal uh, career placement, right? So they're gonna help you looking for internships and jobs. Now, when I, again, when I say help, it doesn't mean they're gonna give it to you, but they're gonna show you how to use the resources like Nittany Lion Careers, which is where a lot of recruiters will post different job opportunities. Again, you need to make appointments with them. You need to reach out to them, but they'll help you with the basic things like resume and cover letter writing, all the way to recording mock interviews, playing it back for you. So you can determine kind of where the best, uh, you know, how to answer a question. Or maybe that answer wasn't good, right? You can work on different things like that. Other awesome thing with the diversity enhancement programs, uh, very some, something that Smeal's incredibly proud of. There's different student organizations that work within that. Um, if you ever get a chance to check out our building, the finance trading room is so cool. They've got the ticker around the side showing all the stocks. It's got the business TV channels on, the Bloomberg terminals. Really, really cool. But of all the things that I mentioned as impressive resources for the Smeal College of Business, probably none of them are as important as the bottom one. Penn State has the largest dues-paying alumni association in the world. All right, you may have heard somewhere online that Penn State is a bit of a cult. And I will respond with that, uh, yeah, we are. Take advantage of it. Penn Staters love helping other Penn Staters. We have so many Penn State alumni that will come back and volunteer for the Smeal College of Business. We have a mentoring program. It says here, you can actually sign up and be assigned an alumni mentor, right? Obviously, pre-COVID, you can meet with them. Hopefully, now we're kind of getting back to that, but you can network with them, have them questions. They're going to help you throughout that career process. Take advantage of the fact that Penn Staters love helping other Penn Staters. It's one of the things that, again, with power in numbers, there's a huge benefit to having such a strong alumni base, and I highly encourage you to take advantage of that. We talked a little bit about this, but we do have the Business Career Center, which is where we you know, kind of help with internships and careers. An internship at, at Smeal College of Business is not required. You do not need one to graduate. So that can be a bit of a differentiator for other schools, but the vast majority do. I believe like 86 or 87% 87 of our students will get an internship while they're here. We also have the Bank of America Career Services, which is for all Penn State students. So if you think about it, if you're in the Smeal College of Business, you actually have two different career service resources for you. How awesome is that? Right. We have the largest career fair in the entire area held in the Bryce Jordan Center where the men's and women's basketball team plays. My first year seminar, what I teach, I actually require my students to go to the career fair freshman year and write a reflection on it. And almost every time the reflection starts, uh, wow, I was really overwhelmed and not prepared for that. And to which I always say, cool. Let's talk about how we can do better next time, right? So that's a really neat way to kind of get your feet wet. But again, there's always recruiters that are looking for SMEAL students. We'll have just people, you know, to have tables, if your companies have tables in our atrium, you know, not, not around a career fair. They'll just come randomly. Go talk to them, even as freshmen, right? Reach out, link with them on LinkedIn. You know, maybe sophomore, junior year, we can help try to get an internship with them. So take advantage of those networking opportunities that exist because they're there, but you need to take advantage of them.
Um, we do have a global, global focus. So here's one thing uh, that I do want to spend some time on. We did talk about the international business minor that requires students study abroad. About 30% of our students uh, do study abroad. Couldn't recommend it more. And it's not just fall and spring semester. They have spring break opportunities. They have summer session, right? May semesters. Take advantage of the different study abroad opportunities that exist. We do also have a world language requirement. This is not everyone's favorite slide. Julia already threw in the chat a little bit more about it. So let's talk about how this works. Smeal has what we call a 12th credit level language requirement. What the heck does that mean? Language courses at Penn State are four credits. So to get to 12, you have to complete the third level, right? Four times three is 12. That's pretty simple. So what level you start at depends on if and how many years you took of this language in high school. So if you're starting at a brand new language, obviously you take the first level, take the second level, take the third, then you'd be done. But as Julia put in the chat, if you have two to three years of experience with that language in high school, you'd start at the second level, then take the third level and then be done. If you have four more, then you'd start right at that third level and then be done. You don't have to take the language right away. It's not part of the entrance to major process, but we usually encourage students to get it done early, especially if they're continuing language they took in high school, because the more time you have off, the more you're gonna forget, right? So we do try to get the language done uh, relatively early. Um, again, not required, but is, is recommended to try to get that done uh, sooner rather than later. Why do we have all these things? Again, I said this before, Business is international. It has a global focus. We know that, right? We can't be country centric. So it's important for us to make sure we're both learning and immersing ourselves within those different opportunities. This is a really cool slide. We could talk about this one for a long time. I'm just gonna focus on a few key things. Let's look at the top left. Uh, those are some of the biggest companies in the world. They're hiring our students. They want our students, right? Second thing I like to point out is the, the two higher um, uh, kind of area at the bottom. Look at all those companies that are hiring Penn State students. And this slide used to be even bigger because we tried to include a box that says one hire. We ran out of room, all right? There's so many companies want to hire SMEAL students. Reason why is we're able to attract smart students. That's why you're here today. We give them a good education. They go out and perform well. So then the companies say, hey, we want more of those students. So we get more students in, we teach them well, they go out and perform well, right? It's an amazing cycle. So there's so much opportunity here for students to take advantage of. Other things I'd like to point out, that's a heck of a starting salary, right? Ain't nothing wrong with that as a 22 year old. Um, and then I guess I mentioned about 85% of our students reported at least one internship. Now we spend the vast majority of this presentation talking about the curricula, right? And that makes sense because that's, that's a huge reason why we're here, right? Obviously you go to college to graduate. I always like to get to the slide and say, but we're allowed to have some fun while we're here, right? So let's talk a little about the extracurriculars. So there are uh, over 40 uh, SMEAL organizations. By SMEAL organizations, they could be business fraternity, they could be a club based on your major, different things like that. Um, each semester will start with a complete, uh, huge involvement fair, both for the university and for SMEAL. There's usually two different involvement fairs. What I encourage my first year students to do is go to these involvement fairs, see what's out there, sign up for some, some listserv, right? go to a couple meetings. If you enjoy that club organization, you keep going. If not, it's not a big deal. By the end of the first year, you probably want to be involved with, I, I always try to say one more business or major related club or organization, and then something that has nothing to do with business, right? I did theater when I was here. I did IM sports when I was here, right? Take advantage of those things. We have over 1,100 clubs. All right, so if you come back and tell me, ah, there's nothing that was interesting in the involvement fair, I'd say, I don't think you look very close. We have 1,100 clubs. If anyone's ever read Harry Potter, we have a club that plays Quidditch against other schools. I don't know how it works, all right, but they do it, right? If we have that, we have a club for everything. So it's important to have that, that, you know, that balance. Obviously, you're coming to college, you're getting a degree. That's, that's what it's all about, right? But again, it's also, we want to make sure we have that personal development side and the extracurricular can really help with that. Not only that, it also helps you stand out in your resume, right? We have different things like case competitions where different companies will come in, maybe, might even offer cash prizes, but it's a great way to network with their company, right? We different case studies, different things like that. Take advantage of these opportunities. Hopefully that's the biggest takeaway that you'll have from this presentation today is that the, there's so much here in the Smeal College of Business for you to take advantage of, but it's up to you to take advantage of it, right? That's really the, the kind of the key here. A few more things before we get to the Q&A. We also have an ethical leadership challenge. It's designed to kind of track um, and, and give you credit for different activities and things that you participate in, help you stand out. Uh, again, a good thing to put in your resume. So that's uh, something you can think about joining once you start here. We also have the Bash, the Bash House, which is pretty cool. Business and society housing. So this is actually an opportunity to live with other business students, um, by the way. The fact that you contact with questions, none of them Julia Cutler, who's running today's whole show. So she's very versatile. We really enjoy having her here, but she's uh, in charge of the Bash Housing. Again, a great opportunity. Learn a little bit more, some networking opportunities, social engagement. Um, I actually lived uh, in, the, uh, in the housing where they lived uh, my first year. Couldn't recommend it more. I'm going to brag about it a little bit. 
It's got air conditioning. It's got some private bathrooms. Tough to beat. So I ask care if you have any questions about the Bash House Business and Society House. Now, that is almost exactly 30 minutes of me talking. That is a lot of me talking. I know Julia was able to answer some questions in the chat there, but I like to leave this time and say, what questions do you have for us? And we will try to answer them. I'm also going to take a sip of water because that was a lot of talking. So what questions do you guys have for us that we can help answer today? You can use the chat or the Q&A. It's all good with us. Julie, you want to take that one since it's about you, Bash? You can select Bash as, as a freshman, uh, and you should. That's the best way to, um, to get involved. So what you would do is um, on your um, – trying to see the exact way you can do it through the housing contract. Okay, so when requesting a contract on Penn State's e-living website – you would click North Halls and then the special living option of BASH. Um, so that's how you would request BASH housing. And again, that is a living learning community where you will be um, living with other business students who are like-minded, meal tracking, things like that. Um, so yes, you can go on to eLiving, that Penn State Housing e-contract website, select North Halls and the special living option of BASH. Great question. Other questions you might have for us? We're very happy to answer questions, but also in about 15 minutes ish, we will also have um, our, our panel representatives here too. I'll answer this one. So, if you took Spanish freshman, sophomore, junior year, that would likely mean three units would be reported on your high school transcript. You would start at Spanish two, then take Spanish three, and then you'd be done. All right. Good question. Now, sometimes people, uh, the, the middle school will actually count as a first level. So that looks like three, but potentially your middle school could count as well. If that would, in that case, then you'd be starting at a four units and you'd start at Spanish three. Another thing to note is that taking four years of the language does not place you out of that option. You, if you take four or five years, depending on what you took in middle school, you still need to take a language. The only way to not take a language is to do a proficiency exam if you're fluent in another language or have transfer credit for that. All right, questions are flowing in now. I'm gonna to try to go in order here so we can get it. So Jenna, when you use the Penn State transfer credit tool to the course and not being evaluated as faculty yet. So, so what that kind of means, listen, there's so many courses out there at different colleges and, and, and you know high schools and whatnot. Obviously not everything has been evaluated yet. So what that would happen is you would bring, have keep a copy of your transcript, whatever course you took there, Jenna. Um, once you, you know, obviously get into college or wherever you accept, they would then be able to look at that, evaluate it and potentially give you credit, right? So we just don't know what that would be yet. That's what that means. Um, Heidi, what level would someone with four years be at? You'd take the third level, and that would be that. Um, I'm going to skip the bash one so we can get back to that for you, Julia. I'll and just say no. If you've okay. selected East, the there East is not bash housing, it is North. But there you go. could contact our housing office. It's housing at psu.edu is the website and ask to be um, basically kind of reevaluated. Uh, Jada Launchbox, um, it, it's a, it basically works, uh, it's, it's actually in a place downtown, but it's, in, you know, a partner and affiliate with Penn State. It's an opportunity for uh, small businesses to almost start as an incubator, right? So you can apply for different grants uh, and monies. Obviously, there's, there's shared, um, you know, costs with, with having the office space there, but it's a way to try to start building your company out. Uh, and there have been many successful companies that have bloomed from the Launchbox. Obviously not, you know, there's, it's competitive, not just anyone can, you know, hop in and use the resources, but something that is really a unique opportunities. A lot of our corporate innovation students will take advantage to that. Uh, Zach, do general SMEAL students have less access to networking events? Zach, it's not less, it's just different. Obviously Sapphire has its own um, entities, um, but no, there's, believe me, there's so much networking with at Penn State. I mean, if you go to every networking event, you're gonna be busy. So there's still plenty, plenty, plenty of access. And I will take the next three. Please. Let's do it. Um, and I will also add on to that, our business career center that I've been mentioned hosts dozens, and I mean dozens of networking, professional development opportunities, so many things throughout the semester. It's not just limited to Sapphire. So a student asked about computers. Computer, you can bring any computer you want. That's the bottom line. Is the third level course of the language the hardest? There are way more courses beyond the level three of a language, so it is not the hardest language course. 
And a lot of students worry about taking that level of language, but most students who have had four more years in high school take level three for that one semester, move on, and they're totally fine. Again, it's a big kind of stress point for students, but most students are completely fine. But again, it's not the hardest level, it's just the level you have to complete. Um, someone else asked, what edge do I have if I choose LLC over normal housing? What are my disadvantage? You would not be disadvantaged. The advantage of the LLC is it is basically a student organization that you are starting in from day one. Again, you know that you would be dorming with other students who are SMEAL tracking students, which again is not something that is guaranteed or, you know, it's possible, but it's not guaranteed if you were to do something like an East Halls or non-LLC housing but you are not disadvantaged. You just have some other advantages. Again, you live in a suite style dorm. You are right across from the business building. You would be working with me and other, our executive board, attending career events, professional development opportunities, all being shared with you. So you have some advantages, but you are certainly not disadvantaged. As Evan said, as long as you are taking advantage and looking at all of the opportunities, you will be successful here. All right, we got a bunch of good questions coming in here that I think are really important. So. Uh, I'm, I'm skipping because Jayan asked, I was admitted as a direct to my major. Do I still need to meet the entrance to major criteria? Yes, this is very important. You are not in your yes. major. Please, 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 everyone note this. And I tried to be as clear as I could, and even Julia added to this. When you are accepted in the Smeal College of Business, everyone, regardless of what major you applied for, is moved to what's called pre-major status. You must still complete the entrance to major process that we discussed. Everyone. Every single one has to do that. So no one is directly admitted to your major. So I'll be very, very clear about that. Everyone in this chat will still have to get into their major through the entrance to major process. There are Evan, a couple other, I think you skipped ahead, one about the chance. Oh, we skipped a couple. I wanted to make okay. sure we talked about I that. I want to go back to transferring. So yes. back to the computer, Mac, PC, whatever you want, totally fine. A student asked, what are the chances of transferring for Penn State from another institution? Penn State in general, high. Smeal, trickier. Uh, SMEAL has very specific transfer requirements. So there are at, after two semesters of college coursework at a community college or other four-year institution, you are ineligible for SMEAL. So again, if you're just talking about Penn State, there's a lot of transfer possibilities. For SMEAL, it's a little bit trickier, but all of you here today should be admitted as, as first-year students. All right, we got a couple more here. This, I just want to answer sure the Sapphire that. one, Evan. Yeah, we talked about the Sapphire. You can only apply. So that, that's only that application in the past is only it's only pre freshman year. If you send summer session, you take less credits in the first semester of fall. It's really not really a standard semester in the fall or spring is 15 credits. If you take six credits in the summer, yeah, you might be able to take a credit or two less, but it doesn't really change your plan um, all that much. Um, similarly, can you take, you know, language credits at community college? Yeah, you can. You don't need to take those at Penn State, but please make sure to use the uh, transfer credit tool to make sure it's a direct equivalent. A lot of other colleges' languages are three credits. Those are not going to transfer directly as four credit courses. You want to make sure about that. And then, Julie, I think we have two important questions. Yeah, in the, in the Q&A, so the Jade, um, if... We have a lot of languages that were offered that are offered at Penn State. So if you, a lot of times the language that you speak, there's already a, a language exam, so you can be exempt from the language. However, even if you don't speak one of the languages that we teach, oftentimes our language departments can find a faculty member who speaks that language who can offer you a proficiency exam. So no, you are not necessarily going to have to completely start a new language. Ideally, we would find someone to test you in your native language. And then someone asked, is, is, how do you transfer from engineering to SMEAL? Um, well, that's kind of tricky. So if you're accepted, so one of the things that's about the SMEAL entrance major process that maybe we didn't talk about, and obviously people that were in this, you know, if we're here today, it's, if this is for SMEAL, so this really shouldn't apply to many people, um, you'd have to move to what's called the Division of Undergraduate Studies. That's a college like engineering and like SMEAL. It's called an exploratory college designed to help people, you know, figure out where they want to go. You would then go through the same entrance to major process that we already talked about and then apply to SMEAL. But you can't be in engineering and apply to SMEAL if you take all the courses. So you need to switch to DUS right away. Engineering and SMEAL are probably two of the most popular majors at Penn State. If you're considering both of them, you really need to be in the Division of Undergraduate Studies or you're not going to have access to both, both types of engineering engineering entrance to major courses and SMEAL entrance to major courses. If you're in DUS, that's where you'd want to be, Division of Undergraduate Studies, you can kind of take courses in both for a semester or two to try to help figure it out, but eventually you're going to have to make a decision, all right? That's not the easiest um, uh, move to make. Does that make sense? Hopefully, hopefully I answered that correctly. So 
There was a student who joined late and we are going to explain this one more time. <laughs> you want me to go back on the slides? Nope, don't go back. Leave okay. her where she is. Okay, all right. Everybody is pre-major. You all put an intended major on your application. You are not in that major yet. Your acceptance letter said, congratulations, welcome to the Smeal College of Business with the intended major of marketing. But you are not a marketing major, a finance major, a supply chain major, anything. Until you go through that entrance to major process, which Evan, maybe you could just put the entrance to major process link in the Absolutely. chat. Um, oh, I see what you want me to do. Give me yeah. a second do that. So until you go through that entrance to major process, which was three components, um, courses, GPA, and the credit window, then you are in that major. So typically students declare their major spring of sophomore year or their fourth semester. At that time, you would be required to pick one of the nine majors that Evan listed. Hopefully that clears things up. And I just put the link in the chat for the, that's the entrance to major requirements for the previous year. So your numbers might look a little bit different, but you get a feeling for that process. Um, I mean, you can you can get a second major at some other majors at Penn State. You cannot get a second major in SMEAL. You can and you can potentially, major. depending on the major that you're planning, you could potentially maybe start that throughout the ed entrance to major process for SMEAL. So if you were thinking about an econ double major, you could be taking econ courses concurrently with your SMEAL courses. It's not that you have to wait until you're in that major. Sometimes you might have to wait till you're a certain semester standing, but a lot of times for whatever major that you're thinking, you might be able to just start taking them all concurrently. Uh, Evan, I don't think you can be a finance and computer science major. Yeah, so I'm looking up what the administratively control. So this is where things get tricky. Um, there are administratively controlled majors. Oh, I have it. I have it here. Yeah, I have it right here. Uh, computer science is administratively controlled. Yes. All the SMU ones. So no, you can't do both. You'd have to pick just one or the other. And we also, um, unfortunately, don't have a computer science minor. I will say that. That's awesome. Um, so what's the difference between North and East Halls? Both are equidistant from the business building and the business building, while it's a great building and a lot of people congregate there, it is not where all your classes are gonna be. You are gonna be going all over campus. So um, the difference between North and East, there are some variability things there. North has that some of that suite style living. Um, East has some newly renovated dorms. Evan, you said you lived in North, so. I but did, I lived in North for three years. It's awesome. It does cost more. So that, that's potentially a downside. Also renovated dorms in East will also cost yeah. more. But it doesn't matter which one for the business building. Again, they're both equidistant and not all your classes are gonna be here anyway. You're gonna be roaming around campus. You're gonna be an expert in that campus. Good question. Any other questions for us? I want to make sure, Julie, how are we on time? I want to make sure we give them a little bit of time before our next session. I just want you to share the last slide. Oh, I'm um, sorry. So Give that way we second. can, um, that'll be our panel that's that's coming up. Um, we have time as our panelists come in. Thank you. Just stay muted and um, off camera for a minute until we get everyone here. And then Evan will put up that slide. We have a couple more minutes for a couple more questions. You guys started off slow, but you really ramped up with the questions. <laughs> I told you right 45 minutes ago, I said, we're going to leave here with all of your questions answered. Uh, boy, I don't know the, I don't know the number to your question, Nana. Do you know it, Julie? I don't. Yeah, I would imagine you could say Smeals is, is somewhat reflective. Um, he did share the link um, right above that with Evan that shows the entrance to major requirements and reiterates those for everybody. And then if you want to contact the diversity enhancement programs uh, within SMEAL, maybe Julie, you can put their, their website chat yeah. on, maybe they'll get a little of that information. Yeah, I just, some, some of those metrics are just not ones that are, uh, you know, we, we have uh, readily memorized, so we apologize. I imagine SMEAL's numbers are relatively reflective within the university, um, but we can, you know, that's what I would recommend doing. Anything else for us? You guys got a killer panel coming in here, but if there's anything else I can answer, I'm happy to help with that. Hold on, I want to find... Jen, is there an advantage taking LEAP courses? So the LEAP, there's different LEAP categories. There is a business one, which is usually English 15 and MIS 250, um, which is a management information systems business course. You can um, take that, any LEAP. Yeah, you can do any LEAP you want. That one, you know, those two courses are required for SMEAL, but there's not a single LEAP that those two courses aren't going to count towards a SMEAL degree. So you can pick what you're interested in. The, the businessy one is the one that's English 15 and MIS 250. And there's also some other ones too. Again, don't get hung up on that business yeah. sleep. Like if you look to that and it's full, 
any courses that you take prior are one going to give you credits mm -hmm. Two, they're also going to give you an advantage, so to speak, in the sense of you understand what college coursework at Penn State is like. You've been on campus, you know where to go. You're a seasoned pro by the time the fall semester rolls around. Anything else for us? Well, I appreciate your guys' time. This has been fun. I know it's a boatload of information in 45 minutes. We do our best to try to get it all in. Well, we got one more Q&A here. <laughs> scholarship question. Um, Julie, can you put this the, the UGE scholarship page uh, link in there? There are some scholarships by SMEAL. There aren't many. Um, they're more um, need and situation based than merit, but we can put the link uh, for our scholarship information on there. Um, yeah, it is sure. really don't bank on them. <laughs> yeah, there it is mostly based on your FAFSA for first year students and is mostly need based as you move up in your progression through your academics. There are some more merit based scholarship opportunities, but I'm always very frank with my students. If you have an offer of a full ride to another institution, <laughs> We're that not might, right. that's probably not going to happen here. Um, and we know that finances are an important component. Okay. Um, some of our panelists are still, I think, maybe logging in, and that's okay. Um, but I will have um, Vivian and Vanessa log on now. Um, well, turn on their cameras, unmute themselves, um, and you can um, introduce yourselves and talk about what you do um, within the college. Who should go first, Julie? Oh, well, you are unmuted, Vanessa, so you can go I'll, first. I'll volunteer. Um, great. Well, welcome, everyone. I guess welcome to me. You've already been here for a little while, but my name is Vanessa. Um, I work in our international programs office. I'm one of three basically study abroad coordinators who work with SMEAL students on questions related to study abroad and international internship programs. Um, we advise on the international business minor on choosing study abroad programs, how the degree requirements can fit in with your business degree, and um, and any other questions or concerns related to study abroad. Vivian, you can introduce yourself. Perfect, thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Vivian Ward. I am a senior here at Penn State, so unfortunately I'm graduating in about a week. Um, I'm a finance major within SMEAL and then I'm minoring in Spanish and entrepreneurship. And throughout the past few years, I have been really lucky to be involved with a handful of different um, programs and opportunities on campus one of them being serving as the president of the Sapphire Leadership Academic Program for 2020 and 2021. So I can get into kind of more about what Sapphire is later if we haven't already touched on it, but that's a quick intro for me. Okay, Michael, I will go to you since we're on a Sapphire kick and I will actually, let me make sure you're the co-host. There you go, you should be able to unmute and turn on your video. All right, now my camera works. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> Um, so hi everyone, my name is Michael Matoli. I'm a third year student in the Honors College studying finance. Um, I'm the president of Sapphire now, so taking over after Vivian, and also on campus I'm involved in the Nateline Consulting Group and a variety of other organizations here. So happy to talk about the Sapphire experience, uh, what it looks like to get involved in leadership, and also anything about consulting or careers that you might be interested in as a business student. You're also Schreier, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. He's also part of the Schreier Honors College as well. Last but not least, Chris Solo, why don't you say hello to everyone here and introduce yourself. Thanks, Julie. Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Solo. I'm a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Supply Chain and Information Systems. So I teach courses in supply chain management and information systems, and I lead our master's program in business analytics. So I'm happy to answer any questions you have today about your classroom experience here, or different majors and, and what the classes are like. I can talk about supply chain management, information systems, business analytics, but I think from an instructor's perspective, I could also tell you a little bit more about what it's like to be in class here at SMIL. Okay, everyone. So you guys had a lot of questions for me and Evan, and now is your opportunity to hear things from the people who are also on the ground with us from the student, faculty, and staff perspective. Um, I guess Again, keep putting questions in the Q&A in the chat. Oh, okay. Uh, can I join the Schreier Honors College if you haven't already? 
So I know that when you're applying as a high school senior, there is an admissions process for the Honors College, but also as a SMEAL student, there's what is called a gateway, at least right now, they're looking to change the name in the future. Um, but it is after you grab, after you finish your sophomore year in SMEAL, going into your junior year, you can apply for the gateway admissions process for Schreier. Um, if you're admitted, as I was, you don't get the honors scholarship that students get as admitted into their first year. They get $5,000 per semester, but you still get all the honors classes. You get the advisor, all of the other perks that come with being a Schreier Scholar. So there's ample opportunities to join if you didn't um, end up getting admitted as, your, as, a, as a first year student. Thank you. And question directly for Chris, how much computer coding do I need to know for MIS? Thanks, Julie. So if you're coming in and you want to be an MIS major, you don't need any computer, uh, any programming experience. So a lot of students get a little bit nervous about that because they may have not had opportunities for that kind of experience in high school or if they're coming out of a junior college or community college, and that's just fine. Uh, you will get some programming experience opportunities uh, while you're in the MIS major, but we understand that you may not have had that before. So you really can start from the ground level and we'll build you up to a competency level that we think is appropriate for the types of information system issues that you're going to deal with in the business world. We're certainly not expecting you to be or trying to make anyone a computer scientist in the College of Business. Thank you. Okay, a couple other things here. So after graduating college, can companies see that you are in Schreier? Can you transfer in during freshman year? The only avenue into Schreier is either as before you, you would have known you were in Schreier and applied already, or through that gateway program, which you applied to in spring of sophomore year, like Michael mentioned. And Michael, I'm assuming you put Schreier Honors College courses, potentially your thesis, things like that on your resume to highlight that. Yeah, certainly. And I think the transcript as well carries an honors notation on it. Um, but yeah, I, I feature it prominently on my LinkedIn and other things externally. So maybe a question for, I'll ask Vivian and then Chris to answer um, from both perspectives. So Vivian, why don't you start with what kind of support do you have for students who need academic help in their courses? Yeah, I think I think there's something that SNEAL is really good about is having a lot of different avenues for students to get help academically um, in the courses you're taking. In my experience, some of the things that have been most helpful are first and foremost, um, and I'm sure Chris might say the same thing, is visiting your professor's office hours. I think especially SNEAL's professors are really like open and great about having open office hours we can go and in my experience, they work through problems with you hands-on, kind of walk you through material you might not be understanding. Um, I think another thing that I found really helpful is through my organization involvement at SNEAL, a lot of the times there are study groups or like sessions already put in place for certain topics. So if you're struggling in calculus, things like Sapphire, um, or if you're in other business organizations, they might have a group where calculus students, we know this is a hard course, we have an upperclassman who's been through it, let's get together and they can help you. Um, so that's a little bit more student-led as opposed to from the professor exactly, but those are my two ways where I found academic help. Um, and Michael, from a student perspective, feel free to jump in if I'm missing anything. Chris, if you had a student who came to you and they were struggling, how, what resources or what would you suggest for them? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd tell them they did the right thing by coming to the instructor. Uh, that's always a great choice uh, for, uh, for our audience. Just about every instructor, professor on campus who's teaching a class will have, as Vivian mentioned, office hours. And that is a designated uh, time per week that they will be in their office, not teaching and not doing other things or committed to other things where their door is literally open, waiting for students to come in and talk about the course or even talk about professional development issues, um, whatever it is that they'd like to talk about. So I always say that's, that's definitely the first thing you should do, get to know your professor, use us as a resource. Many courses will also have teaching assistants, and these will often be either undergraduates or graduate students who are helping out. They're getting paid a little bit on the side, and they're helping out uh, the undergraduate students who are in those courses, helping them with their homework, answering questions, and so on. And then besides student-led groups on campus, there, if you keep going down this path, there are even resources here in town that are off campus where you can go and receive uh, pay for service tutoring services. So there's there I, I've heard of very few uh, 
students who were unable to get help when they needed extra help in a class. I'll add one more thing too that I think is relevant post COVID. So during the pandemic and the year after that, a lot of professors were recording their class sessions. And I've been in classes this semester where those pre-recorded sessions from years past are the same things made available to us now asynchronously. So if you find that you sit in a lecture and after 90 minutes, you're not really getting everything, ask if they have those uh, saved classes that you can go back and watch at your own speed, at your own pace. I found a lot of professors actually have saved those for review purposes. Okay, and then there was a question that Vivian can take about resources to get into investment banking. Um, both of you probably can, can chat about that. Um, so Vivian, why don't you start us off? Yeah, of course. Um, so I, as I mentioned, am a finance major and I had the opportunity to intern at Bank of America Investment Banking after my sophomore and junior year and then I'm returning there full time. So very much familiar with the process, um, went through it myself. And I think the best resource of kind of just getting your foot into that door um, is joining organizations within SMEAL. So specifically, I'm involved in the Ninny Lion Fund. We also have something called Leverage Lion Capital and um, Asset Management Group. So we have three very like Wall Street focused organizations, if you will, that really focus on topics within financial services and kind of give you the technical knowledge as well as the network to get exposed to that industry if that's something you're interested in. So the resources are absolutely here. Um, I'm happy to go into like a little bit more depth if you want. I don't want to like talk too much about investment banking here, but I will say get involved with the organizations within SNEAL specifically focused within financial services um, and work hard and you'll be just fine. Prior to the Nittany Lion Fund, everyone has to start in the Penn State Investment Association. And while the Nittany Lion Fund is a more competitive admissions you know, process, uh, you have to do um, an interview and things like that, Penn State Investment Association, you could join from you know, semester one and that would trickle help you trickle into the Nittany Lion Fund. But again, you could just also remain in the Penn State Investment Association. So when uh, I think Zach was asking, where do I start? You could start by joining those organizations and you can also be connecting with our Business Career Center, our Penn State Career Services, things like that to help you tailor your resume, your cover letter, your LinkedIn profile, your Nittany Lion career profile and things like that, help them tailor that to those things that you're looking for. So thinking about internships, I want to kind of go over to Vanessa. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, international internships and some of the opportunities that students have if they're traveling internationally to also intern and couple those experiences? For sure, that's one of the opportunities that our students tend to get pretty excited about when they're thinking they just want to study abroad and then find out they can also do an internship abroad. Um, a number of our partners overseas who help run study abroad programs will help students with an internship placement abroad. And it can take, um, take part alongside your classes. So you might be participating on a traditional semester study abroad and doing an internship while you're there. They have placements in lots of different industries, lots of different fields of business. Depending on where you're going and what you're interested in, they can work with you to see what, what will match up well. Um, but we've had students in Milan, in London, in Dublin, in Madrid do internships and come back with some really pretty interesting experiences. Both, of course, the professional side of actually gaining some work experience abroad, but also that additional cultural connection of what's it like to work in a different environment within a different culture? Um, how is working in Spain different than working in the United States? And so it really adds uh, a layer to your study abroad experience that, that isn't going to be there with just, just coursework. Um, we also have some opportunities for full-time internships in the summer. So that's just a standalone internship program, um, particularly maybe for freshmen or sophomores who aren't necessarily sure they're going to be able to find a domestic internship, um, they might look into this as an opportunity in the summer to go abroad and get that international experience, but doing an internship. Um, and again, we've had students do banking internships in Dublin, um, sort of governmental internships in London, lots of different, different opportunities, a lot of um, options for startups and, and entrepreneurship majors who, who are interested in doing that abroad as well. So. Thank you. So another question for Vivian and or Michael about the Nittany Lion Fund. Can one of you, are you in the Nittany Lion Fund, Michael? No, so I'm on the opposite side of the pond. I'm in consulting. Okay. Um, so I'm in the Nittany Lion Consulting Group and I interned at a consulting firm called BCG. 
So I'll let Vivian take this. Okay. So yeah. Vivian, can you talk a little bit about the process of getting admitted to the Nittany Lion Fund? What is that interview process like? Is there a minimum GPA? How does it all work? Yeah, of course. Um, as you mentioned, Julie, as like you first decide to get involved with the Nittany Lion Fund, you join an organization called the Penn State Investment Association, which is essentially like a semester long feeder course. So what this is, is every Wednesday and Sunday, you will meet with people in the Nittany Lion Fund. And it'll be kind of like an education session of going over kind of like the different career opportunities and financial services, going over the very like technical math and finance heavy part um, to kind of give you that introduction. It helps you decide if the Nittany Lion Fund and a Wall Street career is something that you might want to pursue. And this happens every semester. Um, so at the end of the semester, so if you're in the fall, and you decide you want to do this towards November, there is an interview process. So in order to get an interview, you do have to complete um, a homework, which is like a very brief recap of each meeting, of each Wednesday night meeting throughout the semester. You turn those in, you submit your resume, and I do believe there's a 3.5 minimum GPA. Um, but obviously, as a first year, like that is a little bit more flexible. And then you have a chance to go through a two-round interview process, which is focused on your kind of being able to talk about your experiences, um, your ability to kind of put those very technical heavy topics into practice when you're asked more of those math and finance questions. And then finally, your outlooks on the overall stock market. So it is a pretty extensive interview process. Um, I won't lie about that, but it is a great experience. And then obviously after that interview process, there is like the selection of the students who are admitted into the Nittany Lion Fund. Um, I know that's probably a lot to throw at you, but one thing I will say is not to get too overwhelmed about it. Um, and you have the opportunity to interview all through your freshman and sophomore year. So the first time doesn't work out, it's a great learning experience. You can always try again the next semester. So that's a little bit of like a broad overview of how to get involved with the Nittany Lion Fund. And to add on to Vivian, I think as a rule, um, a lot of these professional student organizations have a kind of pre-feeder. So in NLCG, we have what's called PSEO. It's the Penn State Consulting Organization. So similar to what Vivian uh, mentioned, we train students on the requisites of consulting from building a slide to communicating to getting a sense of all the firms that are out there, different industries, different sectors, and so forth. And one thing I want to mention, too, I I've had a lot of conversations with students who say, why join the actual professional org when I can just do the feeder and stop? And I think the difference actually is evident when those students go out into the workforce. I think joining those feeder programs gives you the knowledge of that field or that industry. But when you actually join a professional organization, you're putting that knowledge into practice. You're seeing how it is done almost at the level of any company you would go to for that respective industry or practice. So it is very important, I would say, to capitalize on those experiences you have in the feeder program and join the OR because it really gives you a way to situate that knowledge that you have in a way that's almost practicing for the internship or full-time opportunity you might do in two, three years time. And one thing I will add really quickly, I just realized neither Michael or myself kind of gave an intro introduction of what organizations are. So if you aren't familiar with the Nittany Line Fund or um, the Nittany Line Consulting Group, is both of them are kind of similar in the sense that you're working with real clients. So in the Nittany Lion Fund, we're working with outside investor capital, so money that's not given to us from the university and investing it into the stock market to try to get a return. And in the Nittany Lion Consulting Group, you're working with real life clients outside of Penn State and working as a consultant to help them with whatever business problem they kind of introduce to the team. So it's a really cool opportunity across a handful of different industries you're interested in. I know the other two finance organizations are also similar in the sense that they're real world hands-on experiences. So it's a great way to apply what you're learning in the classroom with that kind of like hands-on experience prior to ever stepping onto a job site. Chris, we had a lot of questions during our other presentation about majors and, and you know, career paths with those. If you had a student come to you and say they're really interested in supply chain, but they're also interested in other areas of business, so they're really worried about what major to pick, what advice would you, would you have for those students? That's a question I get all the time. Students are always coming to the off, into the office, especially when it's getting closer to that point, typically in their sophomore or second year, when it's time to decide upon a major and they just don't know. Um, the nice thing is SMEAL offers classes 
um, that allow you to explore different, different areas of business like marketing and accounting, finance and supply chain that all SMEAL students uh, are gonna take those courses. So they at least get a little bit of exposure to those areas, but sometimes the timing is a little bit off and maybe you have to choose your major before you've had an opportunity to explore all of those different areas. So I encourage students to reach out to other instructors that aren't in, that are in those fields that they're interested in. So you can look in the SMEAL directory and you can find all of the professors in all of the departments and it takes a little bit of courage, but you can reach out, email them and say, hey, look, I'm a second year student. I'm a first year student. I don't really know what I want to do in business yet, but I'd like to learn more about marketing or I'd like to learn more about risk management. And I don't know of any professor who would turn that request down. And, uh, and you go and you just introduce yourself, spend some time learning about those fields. A lot of our professors have served uh, in those fields in industry before becoming professors. Some have been professors all along. So you'll get a, a mixed, uh, you'll get a variety of responses from folks and it takes time and it takes a little bit of uh, courage to do that. But I think that's the absolute, um, the absolute best thing you can do is go talk to people. Julie, I don't know if you talked already about the Business Career Center, uh, but they have, SMEAL has a Business Career Center that offers information on all of the different majors and fields that those majors lead to. And they have, it's a great resource for data on those career fields, on the jobs that our students are getting when they graduate, including the salaries, the actual companies that are hiring them, what their titles are and so forth. So as you first come in, I notice a lot of students, um, they're really focused on their coursework, getting settled into their dorms and you should focus on those things. But I encourage students, once you get settled, start talking to your professors. You can ask your academic advisor, you can go to the Business Career Center, and there's a lot of exploring to be done before you have to make that decision. I think one of the things that we have reiterated a few times today in this panel discussion, as well as when Evan and I were presenting, is that SMEAL and Penn State have a lot of opportunities, but they don't, don't always come right to your dorm room door and fall on your lap. You do have to take advantage of those, be a little bit brave, as Chris mentioned, and kind of step out of your comfort zone sometimes and, and take advantage of those. Um, Vanessa, I'm going to turn it over to you again. If a student um, maybe they take Spanish at their throughout um, their time at Penn State and they finish that Spanish level three and they're done, but they want to go to Italy for study abroad. Should they be worried about not speaking the language? Not as far as the study abroad program is concerned. Um, no, we have a number of study abroad programs that don't have language prerequisites, which means that you can really go study abroad in France and Italy, in Germany, and not have any prior knowledge of the language. Many of these programs will have a language requirement on site. So when you arrive in Rome, you would be enrolled in a first semester beginning Italian language course, um, which is then what's actually gonna help you with your day-to-day -day living in Italy, navigating the grocery store and public transportation um, and just kind of getting around life, um, life abroad. So the language classes tend to be pretty helpful for, for students who don't have language background. Um, for students who are interested in language and maybe want to continue, let's say, with Spanish or with French, we also have some programs that are focused on immersion, which is really increasing language proficiency for students who have that common goal. They'll typically have sort of a third or fourth semester language prerequisite, which means that everyone has had through intermediate level language and then goes abroad in order to increase proficiency in that language. So as far as language um, Language and study abroad, there's a little bit of a lot of options for everybody, depending on what your particular goals might be. Um, and really, most of our students in SMEAL are studying abroad in a country where they don't have previous previous knowledge of the language. So I wouldn't let that let that stop you from exploring um, all over the world what, what def different destinations you might like to explore. Thank you. All right, we've slowed on the questions, but now is everybody's time again. Anybody else have any questions for any of our panelists? Do we need to go over anything again? Vivian, maybe do you wanna talk about the um, job search process and 
you know, now that obviously you're graduating in a couple of weeks, maybe students are worried about once they get to that point, how do they look for jobs? Is, is it going to be super complex? What are they going to be doing to get started? That type of thing. Because everyone wants to be in your position where you have a job when you, when you graduate. Of course. Um, so yeah, happy to talk about that. I think the SNEAL does make it pretty easy in the sense that there's just a lot of resources to help you through the job search process. So depending on your major, I think the biggest thing where most people get jobs from are whether it be the university career fair or the SNEAL career fair, or even like if you have a major or like industry specific career fair. So we do have a lot here at Penn State where companies do, I mean, I think in a pre-COVID world, and then I think slowly starting more, um, a little bit post-COVID where companies do actually come onto campus, you have a chance to talk to them, shake their hand and get to know them learn about the opportunities um, and that's really helpful with the internship search and then post-graduation job search um, depending on what industry you're going in that might not be quite as relevant for my ex my experience um, i don't think a lot of financial services companies come on campus but i would say a majority of SNEAL campus or SNEAL majors that is a great way to kind of get your foot in the door learn a little bit about more companies and more opportunities um, i know we've talked about business career center a handful of times but there is a pretty extensive list of SNEAL alumni. So if you can, if you like are looking for someone to speak to, um, to kind of learn more about a company or about an industry, it is a great resource to go talk to someone there and they can potentially put you in contact. And then in my specific experience, it does come from, again, like these major specific organizations that we've been talking about with the Nittany Lion Fund and with the Nittany Lion Consulting Group and every other one on, on Penn State campus, because. There are plenty more than just those two that we're mentioning, but um, in my experience, the Nittany Lion Fund kind of does have a pretty strong alumni base. So I did start my job search process by speaking with people just one or two years out of Penn State, getting to know their experience at a certain company, and then slowly increasing my network from there and getting to know more people at Bank of America, and then slowly getting my foot in that door and applying. But all that being said, there are so many alumni from SNEAL and so many opportunities where people are coming back onto campus or doing virtual career fairs um, where you have so many options of ways to talk to people, ways to get to know more about specific industries, companies, and then job search opportunities. So don't let us scare you. There are plenty of ways to start that process. Michael, anything to add to that? I think that was great. I would just, in my own language, I would just say the mini networks really matter. So obviously every student coming to Penn State gets a really good base. You get the business career center, you get all the um, job fairs that happen in the fall and the spring. But as Vivian mentioned, it's those professional organizations that maybe have a more pointed direction towards a specific industry, or it's the people that you meet as upperclassmen, or it's um, the other folks you encounter throughout your time in school that you can also really leverage to give you that extra edge when it comes to recruiting or identifying a specific company. Chris, for people who are thinking about graduate school, um, is the MBAN program and if, are you familiar with other programs throughout SMEAL, are they a program that a student could do right after undergrad or do they need to wait? That's a common question. A lot of students um, are interested in going to graduate school right after they finish their undergraduate degree and others are more interested in going out and getting some of that work experience and then maybe coming uh, back at a later time. So uh, the real answer uh, to that question, Julie, is it depends. So if you want to get into an MBA program, a Master of Business Administration, which is a very popular program at Penn State and a lot of other schools, uh, many of those schools will require some work experience before you come back so that you can enrich in the classroom with your experiences and share those thoughts and experiences with others. Uh, SMEAL does have a portfolio of one year master's programs that are designed really for students who would like to just continue their education immediately upon graduation. Uh, as Julie said, we have a business analytics master's degree. We have a management and organizational leadership, a finance degree um, and a few others and our portfolio is growing. And these are one year programs typically uh, where you can come in immediately after graduating, start that program. And some students will actually stay two years and earn themselves two master's degrees. It sounds like a lot, 
uh, when you're just starting college, but those four years are going to go fast and you, and you need to start planning around your junior year. You start thinking about, you know, what am I going to do after my senior year? Um, we also have graduate certificates, which is kind of like a mini master's degree, maybe three or four courses at the graduate level that you take. It doesn't quite count as a master's degree, but employers and others recognize that as graduate work and it's above and beyond uh, what a lot of other students have had, have had. And it can often lead into a graduate degree. Michael, do you wanna to touch on your thesis? Tell the, the students here who maybe, I mean, even if they're not planning on doing an honors program, I think it's really cool, a really cool thing that you're, that you're uh, researching. So do you wanna talk a little bit about that thesis that you're working on? Sure, sure. So I'm writing a thesis right now on business honors programs around North America. And so over the last four months, I've spoken to the deans of prominent American business schools, um, such as Wharton and Stern at NYU and so on. I've also spoken to students in those different business honors programs, and I've spoken to the directors of those programs. And the goal of my thesis generally is to try to organize a strategy around what is the motivation of business honors? What kind of students uh, are we trying to create? Because from what I've seen over the 13 programs that I've surveyed and the many that I weren't, wasn't able to include, um, they all talk about this idea of creating future business leaders. And so my question uh, in most part is, what do we mean by that? What are those leaders? What kind of experiences should we be designing to create those kinds of people? Um, and then a further application of my thesis will be trying to pull in some entities um, from around the country into a kind of business honors institute. So I'm working right now with the vice dean of McDonough Business School at Georgetown on formalizing a, a kind of business honors institute that can hopefully formalize all of the things that are happening around the country with respect to business honors. So very excited about it. I think that's very cool. So I see we're kind of diminishing in numbers a little bit, and I know it's been a long day already. I did put into the chat the post-panel sessions. Um, admissions, our, our College of Admissions is going to be doing uh, a lot of other um, events post our session here. There's going to be sessions about Penn State Learning Services. There's going to be um, global education innovation sessions, Nittany Lion Next Steps, if you've now decided that you want to accept your offer. Um, and I will hang around here and some of our panelists might also be able to hang around here <clears throat> a little bit after this. But as people start to trickle out, I want to start with Vanessa and then go down the line of your final piece of advice for these students. Some of them are committed and coming to Penn State, and this is their last kind of effort to get some final information. And some of these students are still undecided. They are waiting until the very end to that May 1st decision deadline. So Vanessa, do you wanna give some advice to these students who are maybe on the cusp? Sure, so I guess my piece of advice um, for students starting off just in this, this exciting four-year college experience is to take advantage of as many opportunities as possible at Penn State or wherever you end up and not just within business. And so really sort of think of college as this sort of growth mentality of learning a little bit about the world, about yourself, about other disciplines, um, be open to exploration, be open to trying new things and not just what you feel comfortable with and what's familiar to you, um, but really go out there because college campuses are such vibrant places with so many things happening and so many people from all over the world. And so from right from the get go on day one, try to try to soak it all up. Vivian? Yeah, um, I will say for those of you who haven't decided, I think I decided about tomorrow, four years ago now. So I've been in your position all too well. Um, and I know how stressful it is. But I think what I would say is kind of how Vanessa ended there, like, don't take it for granted. And I think that's easy for me to say now, knowing that my, my four years ends in about a week, but it goes so unbelievably fast and you have a really fun opportunity to meet people from different experiences, push yourself outside of your comfort zone um, and learn so much more about things that aren't necessarily involved in your major. I think there's something really important to be said about the people and the relationships that you make within four years, whether that be with Penn State faculty or professors or master students and then obviously students your own age and in programs that's the same as you kind of like how me and Michael got to know each other um, so I do think those relationships and the experiences you get are so important um, and I would truly do anything to live in back four years so don't take them for granted <laughs> you will miss it one day and Chris is going to answer from a faculty perspective and a dad perspective as having two students here at Penn State so you're probably familiar with this decision too absolutely Julie 
folks, when you come to Penn State, you're already realizing it's a big school. We have a lot of buildings, a lot of people, a lot of dorms, a lot of classes. Your class sizes might seem kind of large your first year or two before you really narrow into your major topics. And one thing that I think that can help make that school seem a little bit smaller, and this might sound a little selfish, but get to know your professors. Um, and that, and I, when I say your professors, I also mean your academic advisors because they're really guiding you through your coursework, but your professors um, often have a lot of students in class and class goes fast and you're getting a lot of information. You might not get all of that interaction that you're used to um, in a high school classroom. So stop by your professor's office. And then we talked about office hours earlier for when you need academic help. But I encourage my students just to come by and meet me because they might have questions they didn't realize they had. And later on, they might need someone to write them a letter of recommendation. Maybe they wanna study abroad like Vanessa was talking about, or maybe they're looking for an internship or some other opportunity, maybe graduate school, and they need a little boost from someone who knows them. If you don't go and meet your instructors, meet your professors, they're not gonna know you and they're not really gonna be able to help you as much. And I think it kind of draws down the size of your classes and the size and that, that outgrown experience. Um, if, you, if you just take the time to sit down, meet your instructors and, uh, and you establish those relationships and, and they can last throughout your four years, maybe even beyond, even when you're out of their classes. And I think that can be a really enriching experience while you're here. Michael? I think all these perspectives were great to start. I, I think what I would say, and this is something that I've been thinking a lot about over the last, I would say two years, is just because you're a business student doesn't mean that you're only here at school to get a job. When I hear people say that college was the best four years of their life, it wasn't because it just assured them something to do after graduation. It was because of the people that they met. It was the organizations they were involved in. It's the person they discovered in themselves over their four years. Um, I, I've read studies that say that your career is only 30% of your life. And so think about that. Are you going to really dedicate four years of college to 30% of your life afterward? So just think about when you come to college, all the ways that you can grow. As Vanessa said, it's that growth mindset idea. Um, your career will come, a job, jobs will come to you, but focus on experiences as well here at university because that, that's what it's for. That's what makes it transformative. And it's all of those things I mentioned that make you look back on this period of time and say, it was worth it coming here. So don't, don't lose sight of that. That's what I would say. Thank you, everyone. Well, I will stick around for a little bit longer. Thank you so much to our panel, Vanessa, Vivian, Chris, and Michael for being here. Um, I know that I, I learned something from all of you guys every single time, and I'm hoping that the students learned a lot and are really confident about their decision if they've either already committed or now are going to go to that Nittany Line next steps and hit that accept button. So thank you so much um, to our panel for being here. You guys can feel free to log off if you want, and I will hang around here for any additional questions from our students or family. So again, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we really appreciate you being here.